Hey everybody, it's Pastor Benjamin with Convergence Center here and uh, welcome you to join me as we're looking line upon line at the book of Colossians and just enjoying what the Bible has to say. And we're going to pick up here in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 3. We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven of which you previously heard in the word of truth the gospel that's verses 3 4 and 5 first just to point out here verse 3 we give thanks to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ praying always for you I want you to see the heart of a leader here, the heart of someone who uh, has really caught on to what the gospel is about. The Apostle Paul is telling them, even though I'm far away, I'm doing something else, I have other things going on in my life. There are persecutions happening in his life, he's starting other churches, he's traveling all over, he's writing things, even though that's happening, his heart is still going out to those that he ministered to and that he loved, that his, he's praying for them, that when you really catch the heart of the gospel, it transforms your heart and changes your prayer life. You can sometimes get an indication of how mature you are by how much time you spend praying for yourself and how much time you spend praying for others. If all of our prayer life is about us, then uh, it, it's kind of like, uh, an immature child like I I have an infant I have a little I have a young child as well five years old and pretty much most of the things that they think about are themselves and you can take that same kind of idea to our spiritual walk that when your ministry is about you when you do things that are just about you if you're a leader so that you advance your ideas so that you are more concerned about what's happening in your life, uh, then you're really missing a maturity in the gospel. And here the Apostle Paul says, I'm not just concerned about me. I'm not laying out prayer requests. I'm not concerned about what's happening in my ministry and how things are going. My heart is, is drawn towards lifting you up in prayer. And I want you to know that I'm praying for you, that Pastor Benjamin Williams is praying for you. I believe that the gospel is for you. I believe that the good news is for you. And I'm praying for you. And I want to encourage you to pray for others. It's, it's fine to pray for yourself. I'm not trying to suggest that you shouldn't pray for you. <laughs> uh, but I, I do want to just encourage you as you're developing in your relationship with God. That when you're, you notice your heart is drawn to pray for others. That's an indication of maturity. If you turn it into a rule and say, I should pray for other people, uh, then you might be missing what's happening. It's really where your heart is growing and being set free from being overly concerned about yourself and being filled with love for what's happening in somebody else's life. So do you lead a small group or you uh, a dad or a mom? Do you have friends? That, do you have people that you're speaking into? Pray for them. Please, lift them up in prayer. They need, it's not, it's, they need you to pray for them. It's not wishful thinking, but it is intervening in their life and seeing great things happen because you are praying for them. So the heart of a leader breaks for those uh, that they're called to lead and, and desires for them to mature and to really grow in their relationship with God. And so pray for people around us and uh, encourage you to pray for your pastors as well. Uh, because the Lord knows that they need it and really appreciate it. So here he says, I'm praying for you. And then I want to just point out three other things that are said here. He says, he prays for them since he's heard of their faith. And then he goes on and he says, and the love with they, that they have for the saints. So he said, there is a faith in Christ Jesus. There is a love which is for all the saints because of the hope which is laid up. This is an indication of, of a life that's been touched by the gospel. The three, the three parts that are central to the kingdom of God, 
faith, hope, and love. He indicates that he sees those things active in their lives. He sees a faith in Christ Jesus, and he sees a love for the saints. It's, it's impossible to please God without faith. And you know this, the Bible makes this very clear. We're called to live a life of faith. And a part of the, the central elements in the kingdom of God is that you're living a life of faith. Faith in Christ Jesus, holding on to truth and who he is. And then God makes it very clear that uh, from his perspective, you can't disconnect faith in him and love for someone else, for people he said that this is the greatest command, is to love God with all of who you are, and then something else is a similar command, and that is to love your neighbor as yourself. And So from God's perspective, loving people is connected with our relationship with God, and he sees that happening in uh, these believers' lives in Coloss, that they have faith in God, and part of that is made evident by how they love other people as well. And he goes on and he says, Because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Now, I just want to take a moment here that hope should be a part of a believer's life as well. That we are a people of hope. That hope is not run out. That hope is alive and active in a believer's life. That there is a hope. And there's a degree where hope laid up in heaven has been attacked and part of the kind of Christendom and, and speaking about, uh, you know, living for now, living in our, and living with the reality that uh, now is our chance to, to love God and we'll go to heaven one day, but now we need to live for now. And I understand that, but it's partly reactionary and it's reactionary because there are people that approach life with the idea that uh, Jesus could come back any moment, the rapture could happen, people could be taken away, and so uh, let's not prepare for the future. We need to live for now. Uh, we need to live for that now we could be in eternity. And so they, they live with that mindset. And uh, I don't think that's really what's being said here when it's talking about the hope of heaven. It's not talking about... Uh, you know, Jesus could come back any, any time now, but it's talking about living from an eternal perspective. That there, God has got things laid up, treasures laid up, and gifts laid up, and, and knowledge and relationship laid up for you in heaven. And sometimes, I, I understand that you're, you're seated in Christ in heavenly places, and, and that God wants His kingdom to come here and, and be a demonstration of His goodness here, but let's not lose our hope and what is in heaven. We are seated in heavenly places, so we live from that place. And there, there are things laid up in there. There's things put aside in heaven for us. And so there's this experience of uh, when we enter into that time of being with God, there are things that are, it's good to sometimes just daydream. What's it like in heaven? That's okay. There is a real place called heaven. And it's okay to, to celebrate that and to know there's a special hope for that. And um, there is a special place for that, especially for the uh, persecuted church, that um, remembering the hope in heaven at times helps people in persecution get by, get, get really thrive in the time that they're in now. But this isn't just it. And sometimes if you're in an environment where there's not persecution, you can lose the power of remembering that there's more. And uh, the same time also understanding that you are seated in Christ in heavenly places and what are you accessing in heaven that's laid up for you there that according to his riches and glory he has supplied things for you that there are, there's access there are things for you that you, you can only get through relationship in Jesus Christ. And are you living your life just from the natural or are you grabbing a hold of that hope are you grabbing a hold of that through my covenant with Jesus, through my relationship with him, there are things laid up that I have access to through Jesus, and I'm going to grab a hold of that thing and bring it into life and release it on earth. So it's kind of talking about two things there. One is 
there is a real place called heaven and it's okay to celebrate that. And that also there are revelations, provisions, mysteries, there are gifts laid up in heavenly places. And thankfully we are in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and we can uh, grab a hold of what is laid up for us to, to release on this earth as well. So we need to have an understanding of hope of the things that are laid up in heaven for us. This is God's idea and this is evidence of a believer's life has been touched by the gospel, that there's faith, that there's love for people, and that there's hope. And so I bless you and encourage you because you are a life that has that. You are a life created to have faith. You are a life created to have love, and you are a life created to have hope. And I bless you, and I pray for you, and I celebrate what God is doing in your life. So keep it up. Take your Bibles and look in Colossians. Read through it. Pray through it. It's a great book. Bless you guys. We'll come back again and take some more take some more time to look at this incredible, incredible book that God is bringing us through, the book of Colossians. Have a wonderful week. Bless you.